Hi everybody, it's Chris Petrie. Welcome. We're going to do some beautiful holiday Christmas cards here. We're going to start out, show you all the steps from A to Z on how you're going to create your holiday cards. Basically, I'm going to do two here, but once you do these two cards on this video, you'll be set up and you'll know how to do as many as you would like. They're, it's that simple. And we're going to actually do two at one time. So we're going to take two. We have uh, a stocking Christmas here stocking and then we have our gift box there like so so we're going to show you how you take a piece of watercolor paper an 11 by 14 paper you're going to divide it off with tape artist tape and then paint in these two beautiful uh, scenes here on your cards you can do any other scenes too you'd like but for the first time here when you're doing this try these two first they're kind of straightforward and simple then you can do some more you know kick it up a notch and do some different you know subject matter for your paintings but you'll start out with one sheet of paper you divide it in half you'll have two cards when you're done after about an hour of time you'll have two cards beautiful cards complete and they open up just like a normal card would and you can put your message on the inside we show you exactly how to do that we show you how to draw your pencil lines in your card so that when you do your um your uh writing inside your card it's beautifully level and uh straight across your page and then you erase your lines once you're done you'll never see the pencil lines and you'll have perfectly straight uh right writing across your uh, card either script or print or if you have to have someone do some uh, script or print for you if you may not, maybe you, you don't really find that you're the greatest at doing some print and script writing you can have someone in your family your friends help you with that and get that done for you it's possible you might need some help on that and uh, I could always use that too. I'm not the greatest with writing, so sometimes I wish I had better penmanship. But in any case, we're going to do these two wonderful cards. Stick here with me for the next hour. We're going to get it done. We're going to show you every step of the way, how to s set up your card, how to divide your card, tape your card, get your sketches done using your phone for your um, subject matter if you want, or you can use other things like magazine clippings or... Uh, your TV or your iPad or, you know, anything like that. Art books you might have. You might have some pa paintings and art books or art magazines, so forth. So you can, you're, it's endless what you can use for your subject matter. But let's stick with these first. The, the, you know, the stocking in the box, gift box, really are two really iconic uh, Christmas uh, type subject matter. And we're going to get started in just a second. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so we're getting started here. You saw the finished uh, paintings we did with the cards, the paintings on our, our um, holiday cards, Christmas cards. Um, so let's get right into it and kind of start out and just um, we'll get right into all the processes and procedures we have to do here to get our cards created. So what I thought I would do is I'm, I'm taking just a, a pretty good size sheet of watercolor paper. This is the Fabriano 11 by 14. Um, student watercolor paper so um it's a good size paper and we can make two cards of it so let's take a look and see here so 11 so we have 11 inches this way and then if we go across this way we have 14 so we have 11 by 14 so 14 is the the, the long way this way and then what we'll do is we'll take the card and just really simply we don't have to even measure or anything we just take the card or the piece of paper and we fold it in half carefully like this and we pinch the the two ends like this together we even them up make sure that the the ends of the paper line up perfectly on the corners like this they line up perfectly like that at this side and then over here on this side too you want it to line up just right so that it's perfectly the half paper then you hold it tight here on this side where the opened end is and then on this side you just carefully pinch out your paper this way. I'm sure many of you have done this before just when you need to fold the paper in half for a note or whatever else you know if you're take jotting down some notes or you need to make some notes for somebody to hand them off for their day or something like that but uh, just to go over it carefully so we kind of see what we do here. So we take the 11 by 14 and we fold it right in half exactly and it's pretty much right perfectly half. Then what we're going to do is um, we'll divide this in half this way so that we're going to have two cards that open up like this. So we're going to divide this in half and we'll make two cards at the same time. So this means you can kind of get all your paints activated, your brushes out, 
your pencil, your subject matter, whether you're going to paint stockings, Christmas stockings, Christmas trees, toys, um, you know, anything you can imagine, Christmas, any kind of decorations. The sky's the limit with your subject matter. We're going to do a, a stocking, I think, first, and then we'll do maybe like a, a Christmas box, like a gift box. So we'll have two items we'll do here. And of course, you just saw those in the beginning of the video. And um, but this is how we're going to get there to the final product. So again, we have our paper 11 by 14. We folded it exactly in half. Now we have the binding here on the left side, like so. So this, this would be our two cards. Once we trim it and cut it down the middle, we'll have two cards the same, just like this, same size as far as divided in half. So now we're going to get the halfway point, and that's real simple. Um, we wouldn't try to fold this in half again because that would be very difficult, actually. It wouldn't really work out too good. So then we're just going to take our tape measure. And uh, you can see here, when I put my tape measure down here, it's 11 inches this way here. Exactly 11 inches. So then half of 11 inches is 5.5 inches or 5 and a half inches. So I make a mark 5 and a half inches here, like that. Center of the card. You could also make three spots where you can jot a little mark down, five and a half here, five and a half in the middle, and then five and a half towards this side of the card, right on the front of the cards, like so. Um, that'll give you a perfectly even line. Or you can also, uh, in your travels, if you can, or you can order online, a, a small plastic T-square like this. These plastic T-squares are absolutely great. They give you perfectly uh, straight right angles. So if you just hold the T end against the spine of the card, like over here, then you have it. And it goes right straight across the paper, like so. And then you have your perfectly halved Christmas card set up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we want to tape this down to the table so it doesn't move around on us because we're going to start taping it carefully with our borders around the, the card. So we don't want to have this thing moving all around. So the first thing, we do, first thing we're going to do is let's open up, for, as far as taping goes, let's open up the card like this. Okay, like so. Like that. Open it up. So this would be the theoretically the inside of the card. And then what we're going to do is just take a couple of pieces of tape, uh, drafting tape or artist tape, and we're just going to tape down to the upper and the bottom portion of the card so it doesn't move around. That's all we really want to do. Now that we have it taped down like so, and you would be working on your whatever you find comfortable working on as far as you may have a kitchen table you work on and you put down like a, a sheet of paper or something like that. Whatever you use to work on, you just want to make sure you can tape things down. So we're taping down the bottom of the card like that, and then we can fold it over again. And now we're back to the faces, face of the two cards. Now the next thing we're going to do is more simple. We're just going to go right across. Actually, I'll use my um, purple uh, 3M tape. This is really low tack tape. So when you put this tape on your card, it'll never tear your paper at all. It'll never tear your watercolor paper. And you do that. And it doesn't, you know, I know on camera this might not look the neatest. You might say, oh, it doesn't look that neat what you're doing, but you don't really have to worry about that. So what you're going to do is take two pieces, top and bottom, just like this, um, but when you leave and you just cover over that line. So you want to cover, you want to cover the paper completely here with your second piece of tape. So one piece of tape, and this is about a three quarter inch tape, three quarter inch tape here, three quarter inch wide. Let's make sure I'm correct on that. One inch tape. So it's actually one inch tape there. So one inch tape, scotch tape, purple tape. It's a painter's tape for the painter's industry, people that uh, paint houses and homes. They use this to cover things so that uh, they can paint very uh, sharp lines and accurate lines when they're painting trim and around cabinets and things like that and so forth. So two pieces of tape, one on each side of that line we drew, the halfway point, and we cover over that line and cover over the paper. We don't want any paper exposed here in the center. Now that we have that, we're really, we're really doing good now. Now we're really kind of moving along here. So 
Now we're going to take and do the same thing on both sides, like this. So now we have one there, a piece of tape there, and a piece of tape here. And you take your time doing this. If you have to pause the my video, stop and pause the video multiple times, do it. Or if you have to rewind a little bit and, you know, along when you're watching my video here and you're doing this at home, don't feel, be afraid to stop and pause the video and then start it again to kind of get the steps correct. Because this is really important that the taping is the most important part. You're all familiar with painting, so, and that's going to go easier. But doing the taping and making these, setting these up is a little more challenging. So now, so far, one on the sides, each side, one inch tape, one on each side of that pencil line we drew, which was the center of the sheet of paper, one on each side. Now we're going to do one across the top like this, like that, and then one across the bottom again here. Now you can kind of see how we have it all set up. Now to make things a little easier to see, I'm going to use a different tape. This is going to be like a three quarter inch tape, but you can use the purple tape the whole way through. I just want to make sure you see how I'm going to do things a little differently now because we're going to add to it. So this is three quarter inch tape. I just want to make the bottom a little thicker. So that's all I'm doing is making the bottom a little thicker as far as the taping out the bottom section. So you can put a message on the bottom with plenty of room and it looks better if you have a wider um, bit of white paper on the bottom of your card. So you have a larger bottom, uh, let's say we call this like a mat around our, we're actually creating a mat around our painting for our cards here. So we'll just remember we want a little wider on the bottom of each card. So this is the bottom of this card and this is the bottom of this card. And then if we look at it, this is basically our two cards divided right in the middle. So this is the middle, like this. Okay, so that's the middle. Card one and card two. And this is the center line. Halfway. Okay. Simple enough. Perfect. So now, what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to use my uh, phone, so I'm going to op open up my phone here. I'm going to go to my save photos. Okay, so I'm going to go to my photos file, and there we go. So I have my stocking right here. So your phone is an, an incredible, it's an encyclopedia of information. You can look up thousands upon thousands upon thousands of photos of any subject matter you want. Christmas things, I typed in uh, Christmas stockings. Here, you know, I found a really good one that's kind of simple and basic, and we'll use this one. And we'll just set our phone here on the table, and we're going to set this one up like that for our first um, painting for our card. So what I'm going to do is take my, I'm going to pretend this is a nail up here, like so. And then I'm just going to start drawing my stocking here, and I'm just going to carefully Do the first first top portion of the stocking, the white portion here, that furry white portion of the top of the stocking, pretty much a rectangle. That's really that's a rectangle basically there. Then I'm gonna come down this way. Maybe I'm gonna make this a little bit shorter. Like this, if that's okay. And like that. Perfect. Look at that. Great. So now we have our drawing completed, actually. How simple was that? Okay, so now we're gonna just um, spritz a little bit of water on our, I'm using my uh, Prang Oval 16 watercolor set. I tend to use this for occasional cards and things like that because it's real easy, right? You just take out your palette, flip it open, spritz the paints, and you're ready to go. You're ready to paint some beautiful cards, some occasional cards, holiday cards, Christmas, whatever, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, you're doing birthday cards, get well cards, feel better cards, whatever you want. How easy is that? You just open up your palette, spritz it with some water, 
you're ready to go. We have our brush already set. We have the brushes that we have from our set, actually. Prang comes with a beautiful round brush like this. So we're going to use that. And we're, we're all set. So first thing I'll do is we're going to get that really beautiful red color for our stocking. And let's just start firing in that color. And you just take your time and mix up some different reds. Don't feel like you have to use that one red color. Mix up a couple reds here. And even, you know what, do some cool too. Rinse off the brush. As we always say, maybe you have a sponge. Always try to have a sponge with you when you're doing your rinse off your brush. Tap a little bit of water off on your sponge and then you go in and get some more color. Let's get some blue and mix that in with the red. Rinse off the brush. Check a little bit of water off on the um, sponge. Then go back in and work the colors around a little bit. Let's make it warm and cool. It doesn't have to be all red. Even though you might see everything red here, let's do a little bit of mixtures of things so that it doesn't look boring. There we go. A little bit of orange too. Why not? And a little more red. I'm just going straight into the paint. Maybe it's a little bit more blue underneath here. Maybe there's a little bit of a shadow under here like that. And then up here it's a little bit uh, a little bit lighter like that. Looks good. Now let's do a little bit of green and blue. Mix with some water. I'm not going to go with very, very dark uh, tonal values here and very, very dark um, paint, thick mixtures of paint. I want to go with more water, less paint. So now here I'm not really using the sponge too much. I'm going to use mostly water, quite a bit of water in here for a lighter tonal value, a lighter wash. And I'll splash on some blue and green mixed together like that. And then maybe up here a little more. And I just want to get a little bit of color and I want to go around this a little bit with a little bit of as you can see I'm just doing little little bit of decorative um, marks on the paper and if you have a little bit of pa paint running you take your um, tissue and just blot up a little bit of paint if you see it sort of losing control a little bit and then you know you can always go back in get a little bit of blue in there like that put a little more blue in there and then soften it out so maybe you have a little bit of a little bit of color around the white furry section of the top of your um, Christmas stocking there and a couple splashes like that. And then I would do a little more red. I would mix in a little bit of red here to just have a little bit of warm and cool here too. So a little bit of red wash, just a touch of red wash, more blue like you see we did here. But I think that's perfect, that's all we need. Enough, um, or less is more here, less is more when you're doing the card like this. Try to get it done, work uh, quickly, expeditiously, don't fuss over it and don't add too many details. Let's get our, let's get our, does that make sense? Not fussing over too much and overworking it so that it looks like really just overworked and too many things going on. Let's just get the drawing in there quick and then just get that red color of the red stocking with a little bit of blue mixed in there just to kind of give it some variation. Leave this white, right? And then uh, you have um, your light blue and just a touch of red for some little, you know, uh, brush marks around 
the stocking to give it a little more interesting look uh, for this. And that's all you need in a couple splashes if you like. If you don't like splashes, don't do it. Don't put them in there. Artist liberty, you, you know, you're the artist, you paint your paintings the way you would like to. You add and embellish things as you feel fit for your style, what you like to do. You don't have to do everything exactly the way I do it. You can change and do things your own way too. Maybe some of the splashes you can lift up if you think they're too, too dark or maybe too overpowering or something like that. You can lift up a few splashes if you like. If you add some and you think you need to lift them up a little bit, they're going to dry lighter anyway. But that's really the essence of it. And then once it dries 100%, we'll let that dry 100%. And then we can fill in our favorite person's uh, name inside the sock there in the uh, stocking. So you can just put down whoever you would want to, uh, your you know, whoever you might be giving a gift to and a card to. You put their name in there. That's all. Okay, so let's get right back into it, but let's take a break for a second. It's always good to take breaks, especially if you can get this one top card completed, then we take a break, maybe 15, 20 minutes, we go do something, you know, got to do some laundry, uh, you know, I got to take it, I have to go do an errand down the street, maybe I got to go to the store, I come back half an hour later, hour later, this will be a little more dry, and then, um, you know, we'll be set and get, we'll get ready to do this one here, okay? So I'm going to take a break now for uh, five or ten minutes. I'll come back and we'll do our second painting and it's going to be really exciting too. We're going to do a really cool um, Christmas gift box. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, we are back and we're going to get started here. Let's uh, dial up our next um, photo here. So let's see what do we have next. Okay, so we have any one of these will be fine. And then you can always... Um, you can always... Uh, take these and you can always edit them. So you could take pictures and screen capture them off the internet and then you can, um, so what I can do now is um, edit this if I can, let's see. So now I can edit this down and kind of zoom, zoom in on the one I want to paint. So I can do that by that and then zoom in like this. Done. Okay, there we go. And then let's do that one. So we'll take this and then we're just going to come down here. And then I'm thinking right away, let's make the box lower in our in our picture here, in our picture space, our rectangle. Um, we, we probably won't want it too high up here. It'll kind of look like it's floating off into space. So let's keep our um, the bottom of our box, our Christmas box here, lower in the uh, rectangle like this maybe. And then we'll just draw basically a, a square. We can actually start off with a large square like this. And I'll draw it like so. Like this, a square. Just basically it looks pretty much exactly square like that. I fill up my picture frame here, picture space, the rectangle. Then I just add the top of the box here. Once I've got the square box, then I can just add on and put the lid of the box on like so. And we're going to paint it all so you'll never see the, the, um, the markings on the, the box when I over draw over another line or something like that. You can kind of see that. So I kind of drew over that line a little bit, but that's okay because you won't really see that. We're going to paint this. And... Um, Pretty, we're going to use very, very dark tonal values so that we're really going to fill in lots of color. Not too much water, mostly a lot of color here, rich, vibrant color. So now we'll just do the stripe on the box, and that's pretty much center of the box. So you can, you can, you know, gauge what the center of the box is. If you feel comfortable, more comfortable measuring, you can measure too and say, okay, this box is... I just drew the box and started out and said, okay, let's draw it this size. It turns out to be that the box here is two and a half inches. So if I say two and a half inches, one inch would be approximately getting close to halfway, two and a half inch and a quarter. So inch and a quarter would be the center of that um, ribbon. So we have a ribbon on the center of the box. So the center of the ribbon, you can you can do it by eye. It doesn't have to be perfect, you know. But if you really wanted to get it super accurate, again, you just have to measure. Once you're done drawing your, once you're done drawing your box, your square, your gift box, then you just put the ruler down on it and say, you know, you could use millimeters too. 
Um, millimeters sometimes are a little easier to work with, centimeters and millimeters. So here this is uh, six centimeters. So exactly half of six centimeters is three centimeters. So therefore we have three centimeters here. That would be the center of the gift box and center of the ribbon, this red ribbon we're going to make here. So that's pretty straightforward. Nothing too you know difficult with that. And then we have the uh, top of the, the bow here. So let's just do a bow like this, just like the photograph here. Let's just, let's not get too fancy. Maybe I'll make one bow a little larger on this side and this one a little smaller. That to me looks a little better, but that's artist liberty. You, you're the artist. Does that make sense? You're the artist. You can take liberties and kind of adjust things the way you like to make it look better if you think it looks better. If you think it looks better just like this with kind of just, you know, uh, symmetrical ribbons here, fine. Maybe you might like a larger ribbon on one side and a smaller bow on one side and then the other. That's fine too. And then this one here, we have the ed end of the ribbon there. And then maybe over here, maybe I'll make this one like this, a little different, like that. And then we have a little bit of a shadow under here. And I'll just put a little bit of a shadow and a pencil line under there just so I remember to paint that in. Because you can kind of see it here on the picture that there's a dark shadow line underneath the top of the box and there's a little bit of light on the top of the box too up here so there's a little more light on the top of the box like a little bit of a highlight of light so let's remember that as we start to paint but we're ready to paint so let's go for it and I always do mention here I did um, want to get this ribbon in up here there's a ribbon up here that holds the stocking to the nail and then also, too, that nail is sort of probably a, a black would work there, or black. There we go. And then you can even take a little bit of purple here, some purple for shadow if you want. And you could put a little shadow back there if you want, like that. You can even put a little bit of shadow over here, too, if you like. So you can add in a little bit of shadow. And if you don't think the shadow looks good, no problem. You could really just lift that up. That's how easy it is. A lot of times with watercolor, you can just lift up your shadows and voila, you lifted it up and you can't even see it. Even if there's a little bit of a hint of it left, it looks kind of good like that. So in any case, watercolor is very user friendly. Let's get going here with this box and uh, let's do the green. Let's not just be concerned with one color. Let's go with this green, this green. So let's make it a dark green, a lighter green, maybe some yellow in there too, like this. So we'll make a little bit of a, rinse the brush off, get a little bit of a lighter yellow there, some darker green here, maybe a little blue in there. Okay, so we'll have a little bit of a darker green, lighter green, middle green here. And that should be good. And then let's just go in. And we mixed up our paint. So I think we can just go right in and start painting. And I'm just going to go right in and start painting. And if you go over the ribbon a little bit, that's not a big deal. And then at this point, you can even go straight into your paints. As long as you spritz, spritz them a little bit. If you spritz your paints every once in a while, just to keep them moist, that'll be fine. And you can just go right in and paint with that. Or you can work some out on your palette like so. And we're going to do that red ribbon here next but this here is good so far and then let's do some purple and let's just do a little purple there a little bit of and I just did a little background there maybe there's a table back here that. 
a little bit of shadow. Just like that. And again, straight into the paint. And I just carefully make sure I get some of that overhang there for the top of the box. And we'll do a little shadow under there soon too. And then now we're going to let this dry because we don't want to start painting in the rib ribbon when this is this green is still quite a bit uh, wet and uh, still drying. So that's a perfect time to take another. Let's take another quick break. I will take a break and I will splash a few times here and there first. Okay. You know what? We can keep working. Since we have the rib ribbon up here, we can work on the ribbon now. So let's do that. So instead of stopping and going, let's just keep going here. Let's get the ribbon up here. And you can add a little bit of air between, you know, maybe this ribbon is something like this. It doesn't have to be exactly like the picture here. Okay, you can go off the game plan a little bit once in a while, doesn't, won't harm anything. And then you can do a little more like that. And then I think we could even paint the ribbon here too. We just want to, let's stay a little bit away from that green right now. That's one of the fun tips and tidbits of watercolor. You can kind of, um, you can do this technique, which is, if you want to continue painting, but you don't want to risk having some of this green flow into your red ribbon, you can just leave a white border between those two. And then once you feel it's dry enough, then you can fill that little white space in. Or you might say, oh, that looks good. It almost looks like a white stri stripe on the edge of the ribbon. And you say, oh, that, now I can do that. Now I don't have to worry about painting that. I'm going to leave that like that. That looks good. Then we'll go over here. We'll get some more of that purple and blue just so we can get a shadow under here. And let's just add in a little shadow all the way across like that. Perfect. Maybe that shadow is a little bit lighter where the red ribbon is. So you can lift up a tiny bit of paint with a tissue like that. And maybe go in with some more red paint there. All right, perfect. Look at this, how good that looks. Now we could do some of this. There's some uh, circles. There's some spheres or circles on our box, the paint. There's probably wrapping paper over this box or it was created just like this. You could take some, um, some blue, maybe some purple. And let's try to do some Let's do some circles. And I'm just going to look at this and go, okay, I'm looking at these. The only thing is this green paint is still wet. So you see how it's kind of losing control? That's where you'd want to um, wait till this dries. You could use a blow dryer. You can use a blow dryer or um, or let it dry naturally for about half an hour. So I'm going to fill this back in. And then let this dry naturally. Or maybe use the blow dryer. And we'll come back and we'll add some uh, circles here. We'll add some of these little round circles to our uh, gift box. Our Christmas gift box. And we'll be done. We'll be completed actually. This looks really good. It's coming along nicely. Maybe a little bit of um, shadow colors. Maybe a little purple and blue under the bottom of the ribbon here. We could always do that, a little bit of shadowing, like that. Let 
Maybe there's a little bit of shadow over here too. All right, we'll be right back. We'll let this dry and we'll finish up. Okay, we're back. I let this dry. I used my blow dryer. Um, looks good. The only thing is I just thought about this and this is a good thing why I take breaks a lot and I take breaks often when I'm working is because you can kind of, if this makes sense to you, when you take breaks and you step away from your work and then you come back to your table or wherever you like to work, if you're working in a sketchbook, let's say, and you're maybe working in your easy chair or at your kitchen table, wherever you like to work and do your paint work and your artwork, the thing is when you do take a break and then you come back and sit down or you're wherever you're working at, you'll kind of look at things differently and maybe consider things as you're kind of getting back into the, the mood of painting again and getting started. And you might say, oh, you know what? I think that the circles in this picture here look really good in the picture, but I don't think they're going to work out good on the paper. They're not going to look as good in this painting. So that's where you're the artist. You have to make these decisions. When I took my break and I came back just now and I looked, I said, you know what? I don't think it's going to look that good painting circles on this um, box. And the reason why is these are very, very um, perfectly drawn um, circles on here. They was, was probably done with a stencil. Like this would be like a, a box that has like a special paper that's been um, glued onto the box itself. So it's a very highly uh, polished um, manufactured box that they're showing here in this picture. We're doing some artwork here for us to draw really beautifully perfect circles in this box. It's not really going to work, I, I think. So we could leave it like this and maybe you can come up with maybe some other something or other to put inside the box, maybe a couple designs or something. I'm not sure, but I think it looks good just plain the way it is a green colored box with a red rib ribbon with the white striping. I think it looks perfect. So let's leave good enough alone and sometimes less is more. And that's why I say, you know, under finishing things is good. I mean, you could always go back in and add things to your paintings, but you really can't go back and take things out. So now what we'll do is we'll see how beautiful the finished process is. This, the easiest part of this now is carefully we lift up our tape. So I'll start off here. I'll do these two. Sometimes it helps to kind of peel it off like this on a 45 degree angle like that. But this tape is great tape. It won't tear your paper. Again, like I said, it's this 3M tape. I may have stock in 3M. I'm not sure, but it is great tape. And it's painters, professional painters tape, which they, um, they make it very, very lightly. Uh, they have very, very light amounts of glue on these, this tape. It really sticks well, but it does not um, adhere to the, to the, paper or whatever surface you're going to be painting. So here I'm just again I'm doing that same idea but really with this purple tape here you can really just zip it right off and it's no problem. Like that. And there we have two cards. All that's left now is to um, carefully we're going to we're going to open the card up. I'm going to lift up the tape off here. Okay, so we'll just lift up our tape like that, peel our tape off. And we have to be careful not to let our card sp splash in over here on our paint. I'll cover that up for now. Okay, and then now what we'll do is we'll take our card and we're going to carefully trim just right on top of the, the pencil line. That's all we have to do is be very careful and get our our scissors and we just carefully trim right along that pencil line that we drew before. Everything's all done for us now. And that's it. And now look, you have two perfect holiday cards, Christmas cards. You can put anything you want in here. You can make many, many of these. You can just create 20, 20, 10 or 20 of them by just doing two at a time. It goes quick. And then here, if you want to kick it up a notch, you know, you just, you, you open them up and well, let's say for these, let's take this one for starters. I would, for, for this, I would, first I might say, okay, I'm going to say for this one, Merry Christmas on this. So I'll sl very lightly put Merry Christmas with pencil first. Then I'll go over with some pen, some dark, I have Statler 
Statler um, permanent pens, pigment liners, they're called Statler pigment liners. They come in all different, really very super, super fine points to like medium to heavy points. It depends on which ones you buy. This is a 0 0.5. And uh, they're great. I ran out of Sharpies, so I use these two as well. And then once you have it penciled in, it's always good to pencil things in first lightly, and then you go over it with an ink or your marker. So now I can go over and I kind of just see that everything fits just right. Merry Christmas here. Just like that. Merry Christmas, there we go. Then you can go in with a, an eraser just to erase off those pencil lines that are on here. Like that, but this has to be 100% dry. You can't go in and do any writing or pencil lines and start working on your final calligraphy and doing your, your um, you know, your uh, verbiage on your cards until this is 100% dry. Otherwise, it's going to really cause a lot of grief for you because you went through all that hard work of painting everything, drawing and painting your card, taping everything out, and then at the last minute, you have to make sure before you start doing any of your writing or anything like that, let this dry 100%. Use a blow dryer if you have to, or just let it sit like for two, three hours, and, and you look at it real carefully, make sure there's it's not wet at all, the paper. And the, and the watercolor, obviously the watercolor paints on your paper, make sure it's 100% dry. Can't even be a little bit damp, it's gotta be 100% dry. Then you can do this. Then you can go in and erase your pencil marks where your Merry Christmas was, and you have no problem with that, okay? And then you can also, again, kicking it up a notch, you could take your pencil, you can use um, your ruler, if you want, you can have a ruler or a tape measure and you can just just set up your lines on your paper real simply. So you can just take your ruler and say, I'm going to make a uh, half inch, a quarter inch lines. So you might start here and say, okay, there's one quarter inch, maybe half inch lines, half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch, or you can do it by centimeters, however you want to do it. And then once you have your pencil lines on the paper like this, then you can take a ruler, turn your card the other way, and you can take your ruler and you can just kind of, again, if you have your, if you have a T-square, which is really helpful, then you just take your T-square like this, and you have it on the edge of your paper like this here. And then you just slide it across and you have perfectly straight lines. And then you can just do this. One, two, and I'm just sliding the, T ruler across the bottom. It's got perfectly straight right angles to each of these pencil lines. You do that. And there you have perfectly perfectly uh, laid out pencil lines and then you draw your message in and you maybe it's like I said it's always best to maybe do your um, do your do your message in pencil first. So, dear me, and then you can put your message in with pencil, or you can print if you print, or you can write. If someone's, if you're not good with printing, and you can have someone in your family, you give you give them the message to write and tell them write it down in the card because I don't, you know, you might not have great penmanship, or it's hard for you to draw. Maybe perhaps you're not good at drawing or printing. Have somebody else help you do that. Get the get the message in here, pencil first, and then you go over it with your marker. And then you can go right over the top of your pencil mark with your marker. And then once you're done with that and it dries for five minutes, the ink, then you just go over and you just erase it. You erase the pencil lines and then you'll, all you'll have left is the ink and it'll look like you never had pencil lines on there at all. That's it. It's really that easy. So there you have it. And you do that and then you, you can do the same with this next one. Next thing you know, you have two, four, six, eight cards made in no time. You know, and you just follow the same process we did here, and you can maybe use this video. Every time you make a new card, you just follow through my process to making the cards, and then once you get to the point where you're going to draw and paint your um, painting on your card, well, then you can change and you can do something different. You know, you might want to try some different ideas, like maybe like a Christmas tree or maybe a church scene on one of them. You could come up with all the thousands of ideas, but I'm just getting you started here with these two. And you can keep going from here, but try to follow the same process. You won't go wrong. 
you just get a larger sheet of paper and you, you do two at a time. So you're tackling two cards at one time. You'll feel like you'll have a lot more accomplished if you do it that way, if that makes sense. So that this way you're not just uh, spending an hour or two and you only have one card. If you spend an hour or two, you can have two cards. It's really that easy. It's kind of straightforward. Okay. Thanks so much for coming by. Again, I always mention if you uh, haven't subscribed and you like my channel and you like my videos and what we do here on my channel, it's just as easy subscribe on the right hand side below. This lets uh, YouTube know you uh, like my channel and you want to see more of my videos and they'll just send you my videos each week so you know what I'm doing and you can watch along or maybe you're not too uh, happy with one painting or two paintings I might do and you just skip those and then you might work on another couple that you like the next week or whatever. So you might not like every painting we do here on my channel, which everyone doesn't, but you'll always find some paintings you'll like because I do all the different subject matter. So we do gift cards sometimes, other times we're doing flowers, still life, we do seascapes, boat paintings, landscape paintings, beach scenes. Uh, we do like um, uh, houses and buildings and city scenes, cityscapes, uh, figure painting, portrait painting. We do everything here. We all we mix it up all the time. So you always have fun trying new things if you like to do that kind of breaks up the uh, monotony of things. Okay, so uh, happy holidays, everybody. And we're going to do more of these in the very near future so we can kind of keep the ball rolling here with making our holiday cards. All right, see you soon. Bye-bye.